Welcome back. You're still watching Sunrise Daily. We'll still have with us in the studio Honorable Rima Shawulu, who's taking questions uh, on the president's uh, maybe, should we say, purported request now, or uh, maybe soon to be presented, we don't know, mm -hmm. a request for emergency powers. But that debate has been out there, and he's given his own uh, stance, his own opinion on what he thinks of you know, that request, if it will come. Uh, Chamberlain, I believe you have a question. Comes in there. Uh, Mr. Shaul, you were talking about the processes and plans, something about if there are plans and processes. But what happens if those who are meant to run these processes appear, mark the word please, appear to be more interested in themselves and their breaks than in actually running the processes? How would the president operate, seeing where we are? Yeah, th 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 that is why he is the president. Who are those that operate the, the systems that we have? The first set is that you talk about is the National Assembly that receives the proposals and then acts on the proposal and sends the proposals back to the executive. Every other person in the executive, except the vice president, is an agent, servant, or whatever you call of the president. They work at the pleasure of the president. So if they are not functioning the way they have, the president can change them. The president can make the process work. But the president now, cannot me, change the National Assembly. The Public Procurement Act that we want to put aside was one of the conditions that Nigeria assented to before we had that debt forgiveness that we got. What were you going to tell our development partners out there if you are going to keep the public procurement aside? If you want to if you, if, you, if you don't want to follow the process, you are, going to, you, are going, you are still going to create fears in the minds of potential investors that you are not going to do things right. Let, let me you jump in and ask this, Mr. Shaul. Just a minute, Hank. I mean, uh, initially I heard you say uh, that it had not been sought for anywhere in the world and it didn't work. But I wasn't exactly sure if you meant, meant it on a broad-based uh, perspective or specifically because i mean we've seen that in uk in 2008 how it helped stabilize the banks we've seen the international emergency economic act of 1977 in the u.s they even have it in some african countries and so it worked for them at that time so why do you think that it wouldn't work here uh, Chamber chamberlain let me tell you chamberlain Chamberlain, those people did not, in those countries, they did not ask for any, the role of the parliament to be taken to the executive. Nowhere in those countries. You cannot find those examples that, that, that the executive requests that. Even check, check the acts of the, in the UK and in, in the US. There was no request for the, parliament, the parliament's role in the process to be taken aside. In the UK, you will not find example of process of contracts of of, con of of awarding contracts being shot uh, b b being changed now the fear that we have and the fear are justified of of uh, having contractors collect 50 percent mobilization fee for instance if you are going to uh, give the contract to uh, a company to uh, work on to, to to work on uh, an expressway from abuja to makodi for instance and you give the contractor 50%, the contractor is unlikely going to exhaust that money that you are giving him for that length of time. You just check. They are milestone. The present process, the present process says that you give you 15%. You, if you achieve that 15%, within, if you achieve a milestone within a, a period, the money is available to be paid to you. But you cannot take public money and warehouse in, 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 in a company. The examples that apply, that, you, that apply about this is Venezuela. Look at the issue of Venezuela. All the things, the, all the indices that we have in Nigeria about our oil, our foreign currency, our refusal to do certain things, they are all embedded in the example of the, of the, power, of the emergency powers that were sought in the in Venezuela. Look you say that the president has had the best relationship with the National Assembly of all the presidents uh, from your own assessment, uh, but some people will disagree. Some will say that so far so good it would seem that uh, the president's relationship with the National Assembly has been tainted with politics. You don't agree with us? I don't agree. I was a legislative staff with uh, Gale Umar Naaba. Mm. He was then the right honorable Gale Umar Naaba, who was the Speaker House of Representatives. And then 
I want to assure you that President Obasanjo did not receive the type of the type of overwhelming support uh, the speaker and the vi and the senate president bending backward to push members to accept anything that the president you've brings. seen that bending I, backwards so far so good yes i've on, been on seeing what that on, in what regard on, almost everything almost everything everything that the president has come to the national assembly he gets out even when some illegalities were performed for where, where, where for instance the senate the Senate, uh, uh, the, the, the Senate um, confirmed the appointment of the of uh, Fowler or whatever what his name is. That's uh, the chairman of the of Federal Inland Revenue. It was a irregular thing that was done. You don't take an outsider to go and act in a position before he is confirmed. It was irregular. It, they, they overlooked it. I can tell you a lot of things that were overlooked in that regard. So what I'm saying is that this cooperation that this president has had can, is enough for the president. If there's no ulterior motive behind the issue of um, behind, but it's still speculation. So we, the president has said the president has denied it. So we can't even. So you think that if this goes to the national assembly, it will be no. I'm talking. I'm talking. rejected outright. I'm talking about my mind. I'm not talking about national assembly because national assembly meets as a collective. If you Nation were to advise, would you say? Of course, shun this idea. I, I will vote. I will vote against any attempt to take away the powers of the parliament to control the budgetary process. Because if you take it away, there's no, there's no reason for the parliament to exist. Now, if you look at the historical origin of the parliament, it's over taxes, it's over the expenditure of the queen, it's over how monies, it's over war, how wars are declared, how diplomacies, at, the, the, the diplomacies are, are, take place. So if you now come to a situation where abnisho, the National Assembly decides that uh, they have given, we have given the power of environment, uh, of power of environment, for instance, to the president, that the president can decide to move one project from any place to anywhere he wants without the parliament. Then where is, where will the parliament exist? That will be a fine place to leave it. Uh, we've been speaking with Representative Rima Shawulu, who is a member of the National Assembly. Thank you so much for coming on Sunrise Daily. Mm -hmm. We'll take a moment now and Sunrise Daily will continue in just a moment. To join us again. We need to declare a state of economic emergency. And the starting point is for the leadership of that country to cut down on its prodigious lifestyle, for the president to sell off those jails that he packed, 11 of them, for the National Assembly to stop collecting 115 billion naira every year, which they can't account for, for them to stop the corruption and budget pardon, for them to cut down the kind of frivolous lifestyles they are leading in. So that they should lead by example. We don't need to see a president driving BMW or Rolls Royce limousine cars or Mercedes Benz. We want him to drive innocent. We want him to drive pursuit. We want him to lead by example. Until they concretely tell Nigerians what programs and projects and activities that they want to take to get us out of the recession. How can you be still talking about getting out of a recession when your fiscal policy is not coordinated with your monetary policy? You are running a contractionary monetary policy at a time that your fiscal policy is supposed to be expansionary to spend your way out of the recession. What is the discussion that goes on at the economic management team? So exactly what I'm saying is that the policies to get us out of the woods are not there.